Is Chumley living big or on the streets? Is he the richest pawn star on the road to being a billionaire? Or has he lost it all? A falling out of best friends, drugs, sex, lies. Was Chumley screwed out of owning a piece of the show by the old man? He crawled out of poverty to build a business empire. He has a long history of violence and drugs. He's a guy you don't want to mess with. Who am I talking about? No, not El Chapo or Pablo Escobar. Would you believe I'm talking about Chumley from Pawn Stars? Your day's almost over. Just pack these up and you'll be fine. For 15 years now, Chumley has served as the comic relief on Pawn Stars, while his boss and his best friend struggle to manage an ever-growing business. Chumley is there to break the ice and more than a few precious items. On camera, it doesn't seem like he's anything more than a lovable, bumbling fool. Unless, of course, the topic is sneakers or pinball machines. But in real life, Chum Lee has a flashy, high-flying lifestyle. One that threatens to destroy him. So who is the real Chum Lee? Will he ever get it together? Is he really the bumbling village idiot we see on TV? Or is he faking it? And can Chum Lee ever get past his checkered past? Before we dive in, please hit that thumbs up icon to show our channel some support. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss our latest release. Will it make you rich and famous? Maybe, maybe not. Best I can do is the secret truth about Chum Lee. Now come on and let's go find out. What, what happened? happened? Since it began back in 2009, Pawn Stars has been one of the History Channel's biggest draws. And I do think one of the biggest reasons for that success is Austin Russell, aka Chumley. Here, I'll meet you over there. Go over here and do some paperwork. Meet Thanks. you right over there. I'll meet you right over here. Rick, go do the paperwork. Yeah, whatever. Go do the paperwork. Show. Sure, the owner Rick, his son Corey, and the granddad, old man Harrison, provide a tried and true family dynamic to the show, as the generations battle out how exactly one should run a pawn shop. But the show just wouldn't be the same without Chumley, the dude who is described as the village idiot of Pawn Stars. But this has worked in his favor. His entertaining foolishness has made him a surprising fan favorite on the show. To the Batcave. This is the best day of my life. In some ways, Chumley is a rags to riches kind of story. Everybody loves the tale about the lovable screw up who stumbled his way to success, with his best friend right there beside him. But there is another side of Chum Lee. It's the story of a poor outcast punk who, with striking resourcefulness, fought his way to the top of the Vegas food chain. And then he fell down to earth. Drive it like a rocket. Rick, use the force. It'll help guide you to the right answer. A man who burned through women like cigarettes, collected luxury cars like Pokemon cards, battled the law, and lost. It's a story about crime, violence, and struggle. So, where did Chumley come from? Part 1. The Rise of Chumley. Seeds of Darkness We don't know a ton about Austin's early life, so how did he become Chumley? How did he go from a nobody to a TV star? And were the Seeds of Darkness already there in the chaotic chubby kid from Nevada? Austin was born in Henderson, Nevada, a suburb of Las Vegas. His mother wasn't around too much, and his dad was a carpenter who raised them on his own. Austin's dad was a complicated guy. He was a recovering alcoholic, and he often had a hard time putting food on the table. But he was also the president of the local AA chapter, and taught his kids how to work hard, show respect, and most importantly, to rely on themselves. Still, Austin's early life wasn't exactly easy. They grew up eating unhealthy government food like pizza and butter, lots and lots of butter, a diet that would cause Chumley to struggle with weight his entire life. Austin often had to skip school or important exams just to help dad with a job. But despite all of this, Chumley still wasn't your ordinary kid on the cul-de-sac. He and his sister were the outcasts, the neighborhood punks. Chumley expressed himself with outrageous haircuts. One time he shaved the crown of his head like a monk and then spiked and dyed the remaining hair. One day, a friend's dad remarked that he looked awfully similar to a cartoon walrus that was on a show at the time called Tennessee Tuxedo. 
And the name of that walrus, well, it was Chumley. Now I wouldn't exactly take that as a compliment, but to Austin, an independent kid looking to stand out, it was perfect. One way or another, he made sure the people who met him remembered him, even if their memories involved fists and bloody noses. You see, Chumley really liked to get into fights, another habit that would continue throughout his life. And it was in one of those schoolyard tussles that Chumley would forever change his life. One day, Chumley found out a kid was picking on his sister. Enraged, he went to the local park to deal out some vengeance. He found the bully and beat him up. Now the two were bona fide enemies. But then Chumley saw that kid, that enemy, getting beat up from some other guys. He stopped to watch, maybe enjoying the sight for a second, but then the beating got worse. The kid was getting seriously injured. So leave it to Chumley, the guy who once fought this kid, to step in and break up that fight. It was on that day an unlikely friendship was born, because that kid was Corey Harrison. Of course the two bullies had a lot in common, and Chumley and Corey were now boneheads together. But they were boneheads who were smarter than people gave them credit for. But Corey's parents didn't want him hanging out with a punk like Chumley. That is, at first, getting into trouble. Now let's flash forward a bit. Chumley and Corey had gone to Reno to do electrician training. So what had Chumley been up to? Not much. He was going for what I like to call the triple crown, working at McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. The two got an apartment together, and things were really fun at first. You know, typical bachelor pad shenanigans. But things got pretty dark pretty quickly. The reason, well, meth. Both Chumley and Corey became addicted, and things got bad. Before long, Corey was in jail. Now flash forward a few more months. Chumley was finally clean, thank goodness, working at Mickey D's, trying to get his life together. But he just couldn't seem to make things work. But he got an offer from Corey's father, Rick. Yeah, the same man who once tried to keep his son away from Chumley, who saw him as a bad influence. Now he was looking for a dependable, hard-working guy. Could he help out at his pawn shop? That's how Chumley, at age 21, began working at Gold and Silver Pawn Shop. He was part-time at first, doing easy tasks. But could he keep it together? Not always. Once, a man brought a stand-up base into the store. Chumley leaned it on a shelf and walked away. Well, the base, of course, fell and broke. How much do you think that cost? Somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000 bucks. Finally, Gold and Silver Pawn Shop was presented with an opportunity. It would be the subject of a reality show. The only question was, who would be on that show? Rick and Corey, of course, as well as Rick's dad, the old man. But the shop also had dozens of other employees, and not all of them were cut out for TV. Some had faces for the radio, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm talking about people like me. So everybody was shocked when the producers suggested Chumley. What they saw was a longtime family angle. And more importantly, they knew that a guy who was always teetering on the edge of disaster would be great for TV. And with just that one decision, Chumley's entire life would forever change. Pawn Star. As we all know now, Pawn Stars was an unlikely hit second only to the massive popular Jersey Shore. Because I think nobody wants to see these guys in swimsuits. So just how big was Pawn Stars? Broadcast in 150 countries around the world, translated into 38 languages. And don't get me started on the spinoffs. There was American Restoration and Counting Cars. There were also the globe-trotting jaunts, Pawn Stars UK, Pawn Stars South Africa, even Pawn Stars Australia. There was even a game show called Pawnography. I mean, seriously, get this. There was even a Pawn Stars prepaid debit card. I mean, wow, that's a lot of Pawn Stars. And for Chum Lee, for once in his life, he was part of something great. More than just part, he was a fan favorite. Don't be mad because you don't have a cartoon of yourself. Why would I want a cartoon of myself? And we all have a cartoon that represents us and you're not in it. Arguably, Chumley was the most popular personality on the show. But this wild success was accompanied by a deep tragedy. 
Right before the show aired, Chumley's father passed away. He had been sober for 25 years, but it was the drinking that killed him. And so, he never got to see his son become a star. Chumley had finally made something of himself, and the man he owed it all to wasn't there anymore. It is this bittersweet emotion that would carry Chumley into the next phase of his life and nearly push him out of control. Lavish Lifestyle Chumley's life became a whole lot different. He moved to Las Vegas Country Club, one of the poshest areas of town. And then there's the sneakers. Chumley went on a spending spree, buying more than 200 pairs of kicks. His car collection included a Rolls Royce Phantom, a Maserati, and a Range Rover. His dog had a Louis Vuitton collar. But it wasn't just goodies. The money allowed Chumley to change his entire lifestyle for the better. At first, he got a personal assistant to buy healthy groceries. And also wait in line for more sneakers, of course. Chumley lost 75 pounds, and he was clean from drugs. It seemed like an entirely new Chumley. But was it really? Or was it the same old Chumley, just a whole lot richer? And with the new money came new temptations, new problems, and new opportunities for failure. Part 2. The Fall The Godfather I'm gonna show you a clip of this video. It's short and blurry, I'm sorry, but see if you recognize somebody. Here, you can see a group of men beating another man into a bloody pulp. And with them is a familiar figure, Chumley. When questioned, Chumley claimed his group was acting in self-defense. According to him, the guy was harassing his group and threatened to pull a gun. So his crew stomped the guy. Chumley said, quote, instinct just took over. He just wanted to ride in our car and start problems. So was Chumley telling the truth? Who were these guys anyway? What was this different, darker side of the lovable goofball from TV? Chumley's new lifestyle made him a local celebrity. And when you're well known in Las Vegas, I mean, that's a whole different kind of famous. This gave him access to people, women, drugs, just about anything he could want. Chumley had power, and he embraced his power. First, the women. Chumley began seeing a woman named Tanya. He loved to flash his newfound wealth around her. For her birthday, he bought her a boob job. Talk about romantic. But what else was he doing with this money? There's a lot people don't know. In 2016, Chumley's house was raided by the police. He was arrested. The details of what happened that day are a bit murky. We may never find out the truth of the situation, but here's what we know. The police were investigating a sexual assault charge. For some reason, this required them to raid Chumley's house. But during that raid, they found some things that revealed dark truths about Chumley's lifestyle. I'm talking about many guns and huge quantities of drugs. There's a bit of good news. Nothing did come out of those sexual assault charges. But the guns and drugs were very real and very bad. With the help of some expensive lawyers, Chumley just barely avoided jail. But he was sentenced to three years of probation and counseling. Now the next few years would be a struggle for Chum. Could he hold on to his new life, or would he sink back into drugs, depression, and despair? The Struggle Years So how did the legal issues affect Chumley? How did his fellow Pawn Stars react? When Chumley's house was raided by the cops, it wasn't out of the question that he would be kicked off the show. I mean, I know you've heard the show must go on, but newsflash, the show doesn't always go on. There's plenty of huge shows that have been axed because of legal issues. In 2007, there was a show named Kid Nation that sent 40 kids into the desert to build a society from scratch. Well, that got canceled after a variety of injuries. There's no adults and I think I'm gonna die out here because there's nothing. Including one kid drinking bleach. Huh, that sounds like something the old Chumley might do. But there was one big thing going for Chumley in this case, his friends and co-workers. When the news broke, Corey Harrison said, quote, We don't have details yet, but are here to help Chumley however we can. But while Chumley was lucky to receive this support, it didn't keep him or anybody else away from tragedy. 
The next few years weren't just hard for Chumley, it was a difficult time for everybody in the Pawn Star universe. Corey's house was broken into, crooks bypassed the security system by creeping through the doggy door, and then the patriarch of the pawn shop, Old Man Harrison, passed away at the age of 77. And now, Chumley was beginning to spiral again. Finally, things were looking up when he had a new girlfriend named Olivia, but that didn't last long when she left him for a poker player. I guess that's the downside of living in Vegas. So Chumley did what he knows best, hustling. His new obsession, money-making schemes. He went crazy over just about any way to make a buck. I mean, seriously, here's just a short list of his businesses. He has his own brand of beef jerky, Chumley's Awesome Jerky. He runs a candy shop. He makes lots of videos for Cameo, a company where you pay minor celebrities to make videos for you. What's up, Troy? It's Chumley here. I just want to let you know that you're in charge. I think these enterprises paint a picture of a surprisingly complicated guy. It's said that every man contains multitudes. Just imagine how many there are in a guy as big as Chum. With his deep pockets, anything for a quick dollar mindset, and a colorful personality. I actually went out and bought a new pair of shoes last night, so I'm gonna write those off. How are you gonna write off shoes? I have to wear them to work, duh. It seems that Chumley is living the life he always dreamed of. You know, back when he was that young punk. In some ways, he's a child's version of a cool successful man. The man he always wanted his dad to see. And all it costs is making a fool of himself on national TV. But what does that mean to the adult Chumley? And where is he going? Part 3. Where do we go now? Newsflash, Pawn Stars is still on the air. And it doesn't exactly seem that it's going anywhere soon. In fact, they recently did a different show, Pawn Stars Do America, where the guys go on the road chasing valuables. But all is not well in the Pawn Stars universe. In fact, it's recently been struck by an unimaginable tragedy. Adam Harrison, Rick's second son, died of a drug overdose at age 39. Now, Adam didn't appear on the show. He was a plumber, but he did work at the shop sometimes. Adam's family is, of course, grieving, and they're demanding answers. It's an individual tragedy for those near him, one that millions of Americans are struggling with. More than 30 people a day die from opioids in America, and it's a chilling reminder that nobody is completely safe. And also, please don't do serious drugs. Okay, so where is Chumley? On camera, he seems to be the same lovable goofball. And I think he is staying out of trouble. He made it through his parole with no violations. And his name has stayed clear of the headlines. Except for announcing his new beef jerky, of course. What I admire about Chum Lee is that the guy will do whatever it takes to make a buck. He just knows business. Only time will tell where Chum Lee ends up, especially once the show runs its course. Sure, he could sink back into a life of crime, blow his nest egg on drugs, women, and guns, end up another victim of show business. Or, I think he could leverage his assets, keep his nose clean, and become a billionaire. To be honest, I don't think we can tell which way Chumley will lean. Because behind the dumb mistakes, the silly jokes, the harmless exterior, Austin Russell is a powerful man. For good or for evil, only time will tell. There is no expert we can call to give us the answer. All right, that's enough of me. Now we need to hear from you. Please get in the comments section and tell us who your favorite Pawn Star is. Are you a fan of Chumley? Is Pawn Stars the best reality show of all time? And who out there has actually been to Gold and Silver Pawn Shop? What about Chumley's candy store? Come on, y'all, get in the comments and tell us some things about Chumley. If you enjoyed our video like I hope you did, please hit that thumbs up icon. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what, what happened? happened?